Would you personally, in your real life, accept Dr. Maruki's offer? Let's talk about that. So the new content in Persona 5 Royal is fantastic. It has raised a lot of new interesting questions that the original game really didn't offer. The chief among these surrounds the new reality that Dr. Maruki makes. The basic recap of this is that after January 1st, the player finds out that Dr. Maruki has created an altered version of reality where everyone is happy. We have characters who were previously dead coming back because people wish them to, and a few other things. We also learn one of the biggest twists in the entire game, that Kasumi Yoshizawa is not actually Kasumi Yoshizawa, but rather her sister, Sumiri Yoshizawa, and the real Kasumi died in a car accident prior to the start of the game, and Maruki was able to alter Sumiri's cognition so that she thought she was Kasumi, so she wouldn't have to deal with the guilt of supposedly killing her sister. This setup drew an immediate parallel to something called the Experience Machine, proposed in 1974 by philosopher Robert Nozick. It goes as follows. Scientists have invented a machine that allows you to experience unlimited pleasure and basically any range of experience you want, so long as you can imagine it. The purpose of Nozick's argument is to refute what's known as hedonism, the idea that pleasure is the only thing that we value as humans. Quick aside, when it comes to hedonism, the concept of pleasure is somewhat different from the way we use it in the vernacular. We typically use it to refer to, you know, the more base urges. Things like sex and drugs and you get the picture. But more typically when we refer to pleasure, it's the, to the idea that as Philosophy Dude puts it, any mental state that is desired. I'm also going to use the terms pleasure and happiness fairly interchangeably. I'm going to focus more on happiness because that's what the game uses. The argument goes as follows. Premise one, if pleasure is the only thing that matters to us, then we have no reason not to plug in. Premise two is that we have reason not to plug in. Therefore, humans value something other than pleasure. Nozick backs up this second premise using three reasons. We want not merely to experience things, but to actually do them. We want to be a specific kind of person and not an intermediate blob, as Nozick puts it. And lastly, it limits us to only what humanity knows, it cuts us off from experiencing a deeper reality and learning more about the world. So while it's easy for us to say that, yeah, we wouldn't plug into this, there's a bit of data that shows that it's not quite a shut and closed case. There was a study put out by researcher Philippe de Brigand, which presented participants with the following scenario. You wake up in a plain room. You are seated in a reclining chair with a steel contraption on your head. A woman in a white coat is standing over you. The year is 2659, she explains. The life with which you are familiar is an experience machine program selected by you some 40 years ago. We at IEM interrupt our clients' programs at 10-year intervals to ensure client satisfaction. Our records indicate that at the previous three interruptions, you deemed your program satisfactory and chose to continue. As before, if you choose to continue your program, you will return to your life as you know it with no recollection of this interruption. Your friends, loved ones, and projects will all be there. Of course, you may choose to terminate your program at this point if you are unsatisfied for any reason. Do you intend to continue with your program? The study divided participants into three groups which were given slight variations on this basic scenario. Group 1 was told nothing. They were just given that statement and nothing else. Group 2 was told that they would wake up in maximum security prison. Group 3 was told that they would resume their life as a multi-million dollar artist. So what the study found was that Group 1, the group that knew nothing, only 50% said they would unplug. Group 2, the one that obviously has the most to lose by unplugging, fell down to 13%. Group 3, however, something you'd think would rise to a significantly higher number, only rose slightly to 54%. So what the study concluded was that this is the result of what is known as status quo bias, or a preference to the situation that we currently know, and a resistance towards change, which is something that if you've been on the internet for any extended period of time, you know people don't tend to like change. What ties this study into Persona 5 Royal is what Maruki does after the initial encounter. See, Maruki does not want to fight the Phantom Thieves, unlike most of the villains up until this point. So he gives Joker a choice, accept this reality or resist him. 
It's at this point where Joker is given a condition. Live out life in this new world for a week, at which point Joker talks to all of his friends, and instead of, you know, experiencing the life and just living normally, he plants seeds of doubt in his companions' minds. What Maruki is trying to do is to get Joker to let go of the status quo before the change and to see how good his reality actually is. And while in the canon ending, Joker rejects this offer, it still shows that Joker's just assuming, oh, you changed reality, therefore it's bad, and wanting to combat that by making him experience it. But there's also something that's a bit more significant in there as well. Because at one point, it's mentioned that if they accept Maruki's reality, the thing that tied the Phantom Thieves together would be gone. When I had that strange experience you all mentioned, I saw him and the rest of us there together. I want to believe the connection we share here is a genuine one. Well, I know if we don't do something soon, we're gonna lose our connection with him. Don't ask how I know. It just feels like the truth to me. Which is something that the question also mentions. It mentions that your loved ones and friends will go back to normal and you will have no recollection of the interruption. So going back to the version of the experiment that Nozick presented where you basically abandon your current reality for an alternate one, we have to ask ourselves, would anyone have any legitimate reasons to want to plug into this machine and by extension, accept Dr. Maruki's reality? The idea is that if you're living a life where there is close to no pleasure and a lot of pain, then you would be inclined to do so. This is the logic that Cypher goes on in The Matrix when he chooses to betray the group to return to the Matrix and have no recollection of the outside world. After nine years, you know what I realize? <sighs> Ignorance is bliss. The game focuses on the idea of trauma, which is originally revealed through Maruki's support conversations and then completely built upon during the third semester in the cases of Sumire and Rumi. I believe it was most likely a post-traumatic episode. Memories of the incident must have resurfaced due to some sort of stimuli, like certain imagery or phrasing. Phrasing? I'm so sorry, Rumi. It's all my fault. Deep down, I knew I could end all crime across the world. It still wouldn't bring your family back. What you truly need is to be set free from that horrible tragedy. But how can I do that? The game, however, strongly implies that this answer is incorrect. Similar to how the Matrix villainizes Cypher for his actions, Sumire is encouraged by the party to live her life as Sumire for her sister and to accept and move past her death. This is symbolized even further by Sumire's persona, Sendralon which is derived from the fairy tale character of Cinderella, a character who becomes someone else for a night in order to meet the prince, and in some iterations, is deathly afraid of the prince finding out who she really is. Now, be her guide, and together, escape from the nightmare! <sighs> no, I... I can't! I don't want to go back to my life in Cinders ever again! What the hell? This so-called kindness of his disgusts me. Let's do this quick. I refuse to go back! I'm happy here. This is where I belong! <laughs> and then the end, when he finds her, he falls in love with her and marries her anyways, accepting her for who she is, and then giving her everything she ever wanted and allowing her to just become the girl she was at the ball. Not 100% sure what kind of message this is sending the kids, but not really important for the context of the game. So we're gonna move past it. This idea of having to move past your sorrow is something that the game really plays upon with its choice of sin for Maruki's palace. So in case you didn't know, Persona 5 has a seven deadly sins theme. So there are eight sins presented in the main game. The Sin of Vanity was one that was added for Madarame's palace and is not on the list of seven that we're usually familiar with, but is one of the original sins before the church took two out. The other one that was taken out is known as emptiness or melancholy, which the game translates as sorrow. 
and we see this a lot with Maruki. He is hopelessly depressed after Shido shuts down his research and he loses Rumi. In essence, this can be taken to say, we need to cope with our grief instead of trying to run from it and erase it from existence. It might be better in the long run to do so, but that's not the route that the game gives us. It's why at the end, the party refuses to kill Maruki. They give him a second chance, a chance to move on, to do something with his life and to become better. It's the same thing that happens with Sumire. She is given a chance to live as Sumire for her sister, not as her. In essence, we have two people in the process of grief, unable to move to that final stage in the Kubla Ross model into acceptance, finding healthy coping mechanisms that we are able to do so. The best way to deal with loss is to find healthy ways to cope, perhaps through a psychologist, probably not Maruki with his current methods, but a psychologist who is willing to help you work your way through this grief. So our main takeaway from this is that similar to the Matrix, Persona 5 Royal is telling us that we need to accept our current reality, faults and all. And it ties into the game's main theme that, yeah, the world's broken and we should work to reform it. We shouldn't just run from it and just live in an alternate reality where everything's perfect. In essence, we should reject the experience machine and work towards building a better world with our own effort. Anyways, thank you guys for watching. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you're new. Lastly, leave me a comment answering this one question. Would you accept Dr. Maruki's reality if given the offer? I'd be curious to know what you guys think. Anyways, until next time guys, peace!